Welcome to this video conference coverage program highlighting key data on multi-cancer early detection presented at the 2024 American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting in San Diego, California. The 2024 American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Chicago, Illinois and the 2024 National Comprehensive Cancer Network Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. In this series of six chapters, our experts, internal medicine physician Richard Whittington and oncologist Gautam Agarwal will discuss the most recent data on MSED tests presented at these oncology conferences, including clinical trial data, real-world experience, and post hoc analyses from previous clinical trials, modeled benefits of MSED test usage, novel tests in development, and the impact of MSED screening on quality of life and health and screening disparities. Let's discuss the modeling studies presented, including the calculated benefits of multi-cancer early detection testing to cancer screening. Let me pass the torch once again on to you, Dr. Agarwal. Thanks a lot. So another interesting group of abstracts that we'll cover, this first one by Dong et al. that was presented at ASCO this year, looked at the economic analysis of combined multi-cancer detection blood test and usual care. This looked at the performance metrics for the MCDB test that were based on the findings of a previous study called Thunder. The results show that in, additional, in addition to the usual care, the integration of MCDBT testing resulted in a shift of 28% in cancer cases from stage three to, and four to instead stage one and two, which led to a decrease in per cancer treatment cost by around $6,000 and an increase in quality adjusted life years by 0.1 per cancer case. In this study by Rainier et al. Uh, presented that, uh, the, in the Journal of uh, Clinical Oncology at ASCO, this looked at the cost effectiveness of targeted versus multi-cancer blood tests for colorectal cancer. The results essentially show that triennial screening with the gallery multi-cancer early detection test reduced estimated colorectal cancer mortality by around 16%. And that yielded around 27 quality of, year, of life years gained per 1,000. Annual screening increased benefit to 29% mortality reduction and 46.6 .6 quality of life years gained. Again, these are uh, based on models. The targeted tests and multi-cancer detection tests differ meaningfully in their accuracy, clinical interpretation, and use, and should not be treated as a similar type of screening test, meaning looking at single cancer screening versus multi-cancer detection screening. There's a difference there. This study by Yu et al. presented at ASCO, it looked at a novel multi-cancer screening approach based on screening objectives, cancer occurrence mechanism, and cost modeling. The results essentially showed that a new screening approach does not require to obtain full information, for example, traceability, cancer location information, as over 98% of people do not likely have cancer. In order to reduce screening costs, a new screening approach that does not account for that may be helpful. Now, there's obviously caveats to that because you do give up some of the diagnostic uh, resolution when you don't have a... a cancel signal detection of origin information. However, this was an interesting study. This is uh, another study presented by Kermani et al. Presented at AACR that looked at the technological and economic values of an AI-based pre-screening multi-cancer detection test as a companion system for a cancer screening solution. Uh, the conclusion essentially showed that there is value in adding pre-screening so negative pre-screened patients do not go through screening. This may use other kind of uh, modalities, omics types uh, modalities, including proteomics, which may have a, a better economics to it. This next study by Chatwal et al. Uh, presented at ASCO this year showed, looked at the effect of multi-cancer early detection screening on late stage cancers. This was a modeling study, again, looking at cancer seek, cancer guard test. 
Essentially, the results showed MSET screening could be effective for reducing the incidence of stage four cancer. Another study by Bach et al. that was presented at AACR showed, looked at actually the projected impact of liquid biopsy screening strategies, looking at the high sensitivity in focused populations and high specificity in broad populations. So they saw that equivalent reductions in cancer deaths can be achieved with focused screening at high sensitivity and broad screening at high specificity. And we can talk further about that um, in our discussion. Okay, to bring this information together for us primary care physicians, and certainly there is a lot of it here, um, modeling shows that we can reduce stage three, four cancers to one, two at approximately 28% with using um, multi-cancer detections um, tests like OVERC. Multi-cancer early detection screening could be effective for reducing the incidence overall of stage four cancer. Targeted tests and multi-cancer early detection tests both look exciting for our future, but they really shouldn't be compared as obviously a targeted test is only looking for one cancer and the early multi-cancer early detection tests are looking for a variety of cancers on each test. Equivalent reductions in cancer deaths can be achieved with focused screening at high sensitivity and broad screening at high specificity. And this last point grabs me as a primary care doctor because it's exciting with the idea for those groups that just will not get any other forms of cancer screening, and many of those are, are marginalized groups in society, that we might be able to use a blood test um, and catch a lot of cancers. However, I think we need to be somewhat careful here, and I'm, in, I'm interested in your viewpoint on this, Dr. Agarwal, in the idea that um, as we go up in sensitivity, we're gonna be adding in some more false positive workups and potentially could cause some harm in those groups by having to do um, more evaluations. Well, I think that great points of discussion, you know, most of these are modeling type studies, so we have to take that into account. They weren't based upon you know, full population level, you know, observational or prospective trials that are currently ongoing that may answer some of this, actually. But I would focus on assessing a patient's individual risk for cancer, as we would want to know if they're higher risk for multiple types of cancers based upon their germline history, based upon their family history, based upon their occupational exposures. If we know that they're at risk for multiple types of cancers, that we definitely need to screen for those types of cancers. And if there's no USPTF recommended screening, then we have to add, you know, some type of focused screening, whether it's for pancreatic cancer, if that's their risk, whether it's for liver cancer, esophageal cancer, head and neck cancers, or ovarian cancer, or something that's not screened for, then we should find a test that's focused for that. Whether that means you have a newer test that's tuned at a high sensitivity with a focus on a specific area, or for instance, the gallery test, which is more of a broad screening with a high specificity, it really depends on that population that you're looking at. So I think more and more what we're going to find is with every aspect of medicine, whether it's cancer or whether it's risk of Alzheimer's or risk of coronary artery disease or risk of diabetes, we're going to do more personalized and proactive care for the individual patient based upon their risk and we'll tailor a plan towards them. And that's my goal for the future and that we're trying to implement at Mercy 